so welcome back after the break and uh, now as uh, we are, as i told we'll be discussing what is net realizable value okay net realizable value remember this is not selling price we don't consider it to be selling price what is given in as2 what is written in as2 is it is estimated selling price in ordinary course of business less estimated cost of completion or estimated cost necessary to make the sale estimated cost necessary to make the sale so if i talk about finished goods finished goods now suppose that i am going to sell this finished good at rupees 100 so this is considered to be the selling price but i don't consider it to be net realizable value how do i find the net realizable value if there is any cost of completion now i'll talk about this cost of completion later we'll talk about the second part first if there is any estimated cost necessary to make the sale now suppose to make this sale of rupees 100 of whatever product that we are dealing in we have to pay a commission of let's say 2 rupees to a sale executive what our company does is let's suppose we talk about uh, companies who sell uh, home to home or maybe we talk about companies like Amway we talk about companies like uh, uh, Tupperware where with every product that you sell you have to give a commission to the sale agent the person from whom uh, the sale is going to take place so there's an estimated selling cost suppose it is 2 rupees so if I deduct this 2 rupees I call this as cost of sales this cost of sale deducted 28 rupees now I'll call this 28 rupees to be my net realizable value from the sale of this finished goods let's recall what we had studied about what forms the cost of the product so when we talk about the cost of the product it includes cost of purchase it includes cost of conversion but it excludes the cost of administration and selling and distribution word selling and distribution word never forms part of the cost of the inventory but when i need to determine the nrv i have to deduct this selling and distribution cost cost of sales i can call it cost of sales from the selling price to uh, derive net realizable value so that net realizable value becomes comparable becomes comparable with uh, the cost and we can use our principle the valuation principle the measurement principle cost of nrv whichever is lower on the basis of which we are going to measure our inventory okay sir what do you mean by cost of uh, like the, the estimated cost of completion what do you mean by estimated cost of completion generally any cost that is related to complete the product is something that we always include inside our cost of inventory so what cost are you talking about over here okay tell me my friend we had discussed rework cost rework cost is rework cost included in the cost of the inventory do you include it so as we discussed rework cost is not included because it is abnormal in nature but this cost is necessary correct this cost is necessary for sale otherwise the product is not going to be sold so this rework cost has to be deducted if there is any let's say suppose 5 rupees is the rework cost that was incurred to make this product saleable so 2 rupees we have to deduct as commission and this 5 rupees also i'll have to deduct so net 93 rupees will be considered to be my nrv now this is not going to be my nrv the nrv will be 93 rupees so cost of completion and cost of sales so there are two types of cost that are deducted if i have to determine the nrv remember nrv is not nrv is not the selling price some a concept that we had learned in c enter c i p c c in the subject of costing so there are various methods we had studied about nrv again when we'll be talking about joint products later uh, we'll discuss this concept again okay now this was the method when i talk about finished goods this was the method when i talk about only one product which is finished goods what about raw material generally for raw material we don't determine the nrv generally because raw material is the product in which the company doesn't ordinarily deals in selling it it is not something that is ordinarily sold by the company 
raw material is something which is purchased so that it can be further processed into finished goods and this finished goods can be sold in the market. So we are not dealing in raw material. So generally we don't determine the NRV of the raw material. But, but if I need to determine the NRV, how am I supposed to determine the NRV? Okay. How am I supposed to determine the NRV? So I'll again use the same concept, selling price. If this is the finished goods in which we are dealing of 100 rupees and cost of making the product, cost of making the product is suppose direct material, this raw material cost is 10, direct labor which is 20 and there are overheads which are 30. So that makes it 60 rupees to be the cost of my product. So, if I talk about the NRV of the raw material, NRV of the raw material will be selling price minus cost of completion. So, when I talk about cost of completion, what do I mean by this cost of completion is that cost of completing the raw material into finished goods. Cost of completing the raw material into finished goods. Okay. So, it is like uh, suppose I have uh, I have a electronic chip electronic chip which is my raw material the chip is related to the calculator now if this is the calculator that I have there is a chip inside I have purchased this chip then I have also purchased these buttons I have purchased this screen then and there is a plastic body around so there are various types of material that have been purchased so this electronic chip to be converted into calculator I have to spend some amount other than the purchase price of this chip so except for the price of this direct material, there are other costs which are incurred 20 and 30, 50 rupees. Why have we incurred this 50 rupees? So that we can convert this direct material into finished goods. So suppose this cost, now this cost is what 50 rupees. And if the product that we are dealing 100 rupees is the price of the calculator, suppose let's assume and 10 rupees is the cost of the chip. Okay. So 60 rupees is required to convert the chip into a calculator. Okay, 50 rupees. 50 rupees is required to convert the chip of 10 rupees into calculator. So cost of completion of chip into calculator is 50 rupees and we sell it at 100 rupees. So if I subtract both of them, 50 becomes the NRV, NRV of raw material. Okay, but this is the concept of costing. This is the concept what we have studied in costing. We generally don't apply this concept under accounting standard 2. Okay. So in accounting standard 2, what is written? For raw material, it is written that if selling price of final product of finished goods, okay, finished goods is below cost. That means that you are selling the finished goods at below the cost at which we have made the finished good. Cost at which we have made the finished goods replacement cost of direct material is considered best measure for NRV best measure for NRV we need to understand this concept now suppose I'll take the same example the selling price of the product is 100 rupees okay and uh, cost of the product as we had discussed is 60 rupees. So we are talking about the finished goods. So we will measure it at selling price minus any cost of conversion if there is any. So let's say it is 10 rupees. So NRV is 90, 90 compared to 60, whichever is lower, we are going to measure it at 60 rupees. Okay. And if I talk about the raw material, so raw material, the cost is 10 rupees as we have discussed and NRV will be that 100 rupees minus 10 rupees as a cost of sale minus cost of completion which was 50 rupees as we had discussed earlier. So that makes it 40 rupees. So 10 or 40 whichever is lower 10 rupees. So we are measuring it at cost. But suppose, suppose the selling price is not 100 rather it is 65 rather it is 65. Suppose the market price of the calculator has fallen down to 65 rupees. So 65 rupees minus cost of sales, 10 rupees makes the NRV 55. So 55 or cost 60, whichever is lower, you are going to measure it at 55. You are going to measure the finished goods at 55. This is the concept of NRV. Let's talk about raw material. Now what AS2 says, we'll look at it a bit later. 
just try to und understand the concept why AS2 is saying so. So what I will try to determine is I will try to determine the NRV of the raw material. So raw material cost is 10, selling price is 65 minus cost of sale is 10 minus cost of completion, cost of completion into calculator is 50 rupees. So if I deduct everything, I get 5 rupees as the NRV. So cost 10 or NRV 5, whichever is lower, we are going to measure it at 5. Correct. Now what does my AS2 says? Now I have to measure it at 5. What my AS2 says is, don't measure this at 5 rupees. Don't measure this at 5 rupees. If the selling price is at decline and is being sold at below cost, if the NRV of the selling price is below cost, so 55 it is below cost, best measure for raw material will be its replacement cost. Now what do I mean by replacement cost? The cost at which I can buy this electronic chip today in the market. The price at which I can buy, not the price at which I can sell. Because I am not the dealer of electronic chips, I will not see the price at which I am selling it. Because I cannot sell it in the market, I am not the dealer of it. For me, this electronic chip, if I have to want to sell it in the market, it will be sold as scrap. It cannot be sold as a regular course of business activity because we don't deal in electronic chips, we deal in calculators. So the price at which I can buy the chip today is considered to be the replace, uh, to be the best measure of NRV as said by AS2. So what is the best measure? What will we consider this replacement cost to be? Now suppose it is available in the market at rupees 7. Suppose the new electronic chip if we buy today is available at rupees 7. So the cost is 10 and NRV will be considered to be 7 but this 7 is to be only seen if the price of the finished goods is at decline. If the price of the finished good remains the same 100 rupees, the old 100 rupees and the electronic chip is available in the market at 7, I will not look at this NRV. I don't need to look at this NRV because we are not facing any loss. We are not facing any loss. See, try to understand my friend, 10 and 7 if I compare, there is a loss of 3 rupees and suppose that you have compared it with 7 rupees and you have booked the loss of 3 rupees, okay. You have booked the loss of 3 rupees. Now what will happen when you are actually going to sell this inventory? 7 rupees the raw material ka cost. Now the other cost that you are going to incur is 50 rupees, so that makes it 57. I am going to sell this chip at 100 rupees and from 100 what I am going to deduct is cost of sales so 90 rupees. I am going to sell it at 90 rupees. Now what I will do is I will book a profit of 90 minus 57 in the coming year to be 33 rupees profit. My friend the actual profit that you have earned is only 30 rupees it is not 33. Where have you earned 33? The cost that you incurred your pocket cost of the chip was 10 rupees. The other costs were 50 rupees, so 60, 60 compared to 90, 30 rupees is the profit that you made. You booked a loss of 3 rupees in the previous year and now you are booking a profit of 33 rupees. Have you shown a true and fair view? You already knew in the previous year you are not going to face any loss. Then why did you book this loss? Okay, so I hope you are trying to understand what I am saying. If the selling price of the final product is not at decline, there is no loss expected in the finished goods. We don't measure the NRV of raw material. But if the selling price, if the selling price of the finished goods is below cost, it is at decline. NRV of the raw material is considered to be the replacement cost. NRV is considered to be the replacement cost. So I hope now this concept that we have written is clear. Okay. And the last part is WIP, work in progress. Generally, work in progress is considered to be at cost. Generally, we cannot find the NRV of WIP. But okay, the concept is selling price less cost of further completion. So NRV can be, NRV can be if there is any further completion cost that is left. Now suppose 50% of the chip is ready. 50% of the chip is ready. So the cost that we have incurred is 10 rupees of raw material. And 50% is ready that means out of this 50, 25 rupees has been incurred. So 35 is at which we can see the WIP right now. Suppose, so NRV will be selling price 100 minus the selling and distribution cost that you are supposed to incur cost of sale of 10 rupees minus 
further processing cost so what is the further processing cost there is further 25 rupees to be spent on this 35 rupees we have to spend a bit or more on this 35 rupees so i can consider the wip to be at having nrv of 60 65 65 so i hope it is uh, now a bit clear so we don't see at this wip aspect much you don't need to worry about this wip aspect no one is going to ask you the one that people are going to ask you is related to the finished goods and the raw material. Please try to understand what do I mean by how the valuation of raw material is done. If the finished goods price is not at decline, don't value the NRV of the raw material. But if finished goods are at decline, there is the loss expected. Raw material will be measured at cost or replacement cost, whichever is lower. Sir, 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 I have a doubt. Yes, my friend, tell me what doubt are you having? Sir, the finished goods price is at decline. Suppose finished good prices are declined, the selling price is 100 rupees, okay, uh, which is say, uh, and there is cost of sales, cost of sales is 10 rupees, so it is 90, and cost is raw material plus other cost, so raw material cost is 15, and the other cost is 80, that makes it 95. So we know that uh, the selling price is at decline, cost or NRV, whichever is lower, so 90 rupees, we know that the cost is at decline so finished goods is supposed to be valued at 90 okay sir the raw material now since the finished good price had declined we will consider nrv of raw material best measure to be the replacement cost now suppose the replacement cost of raw material the replacement cost of raw material that is available is 20 rupees and not 15 the price is, has increased the price has increased now how do you want us to measure the raw material how do you want us to measure the raw material the cost is 15 replacement cost is 20 which is considered to be the nrv as per the concept so what does the concept says my friend cost of nrv which is lower cost is 15 nrv is 20 which is lower 15 sir but we are going to face a loss after conversion my friend do you think there is a raw material that is available in the market that you have purchased for 15 and now the market price is 20 so, if 50, 80 rupees is a cost that is incurred by you, 80 is the same cost which will be incurred by other calculator manufacturers also. Correct, no? So, people are going to buy the raw material at 20, they will incur other cost of 80, total cost 100 and the NRV for everyone is going to be 90. So, are others fooled that they are going to buy and manufacture at 100 rupees and sell it at 90 rupees? No one is going to do the business. This, is, this will be a, just a temporary decline. Either this is going to be a temporary decline in the price of the calculator or the replacement cost of 20 is just a temporary increase in the cost. This is going to reduce. Something is going to happen. Don't worry. Don't worry. Still, replacement cost will be the measure. Just move ahead with the concept. 15 or 20, whichever is lower, we are going to measure it at 15. So, I hope now this concept of NRV will be clear. We will look at bit more questions. We have seen a lots of questions. We will solve a bit more questions now on NRV. So, there was a question in between also which talked about NRV and I had asked you to cancel the line. So, we will look at that also here. 105 estimated to be 105. The finished goods NRV was estimated to be 105. So, finished good is going to be measured at 105 cost or NRV which is lower. So, NRV is 105. So, question has solved it at 105. So, we will move ahead. So, look at 2.22. Following stock items are reflected in the stock books. Stock books, historical cost, 1000. Replacement cost, 1500. NRV, 900. What are these ABC stock item? We will consider them to be raw material. There is a historical cost, there is a replacement cost and there is an NRV. Sir, we have studied that as per AS2, NRV is replacement cost. How come both of them are being different, being shown differently in this question? So, in the question, they haven't given you NRV as per replacement cost, as per AS2. They have just given you the NRV by the basic calculation that I have explained to you. Don't worry. If the historic cost is 1000 and NRV is 900, so what I can see is that it is below cost. It is below cost, that means the price is at decline. Otherwise, how can NRV go below cost, below the cost of your purchase? So, historical cost, considered to be your purchase price. NRV is below cost, that means the selling price of the product must be also at decline. 
in case nrv is at decline we consider replacement cost to be the best measure so what i have to do is historic cost or co historic cost or replacement cost whichever is lower we'll measure it at 1000 we'll measure it at 1000 okay we'll look at b another stock item 3000 is the purchase price NRV is 2900 again NRV is at decline what are we going to see replacement cost as the best measure so historical cost or replacement cost whichever is lower historic replacement cost is lower now so we'll measure it at replacement cost C historic cost is 2500 replacement cost is 3000 so whichever is low uh, and there is 2900 NRV so NRV is not at decline we cannot see the NRV at decline 2500 is the historic cost NRV is higher so we are not going to check the replacement cost only what we'll do is historic cost will be considered to be the best measure so now if i compute i want to compute the value of closing stock it will be 1000 plus 2550 plus 2500 6050 okay sir how to answer these questions in exam are we going to just directly write the value no my friend first thing is always split your answers in three parts first one is the reference of the accounting standard that you are using as per as2 second part is on what point of as2 are you going to answer this raw material uh, the inventory measurement is always done at cost or nrv whichever is lower nrv for raw material is considered to be replacement cost if the prices of finished goods are at decline so we have covered the concept of as2 what as2 says we have shown as per which accounting standard we are trying to answer now we'll address the question in the question in case of a and b the price of raw material is at decline so historical cost will be compared to replacement cost whichever is lower hence cost of cost of a thousand cost of b two thousand five fifty in case of c nrv is not at decline so it will continue to measure it at cost that is 2500 so total inventory cost 6050 okay so i am not uh, making you write this answer lots of answers have been given in the question some questions are not been answered okay so we need to consider it as a revision so you need to understand the concept and we need to move ahead so that's why i am not making you write this answer we'll move ahead we'll look at other questions uh, i believe next question was answered okay now we look at okay i have solved 22 first we had to solve 18 also i'll start with 18 then the closing inventory of cost of the company is 284700 okay they have what they have given you is cost of inventory 400 quotes 400 quotes at a cost of 80 each normally sold at 150 normally sold at 150 owing to defect owing to defect they will be sold after the balance sheet at 50% of their selling price 50% of selling price what is the selling price given in the question it is 150 and 50% 50 of 150 it is 75 so 75 is considered to be the selling price of these products selling expenses 5% of these proceeds 5% of proceeds my friend what is the proceed that you are getting 150 or 75 it is 75 so 5% of 75 will be incurred as selling expense 3.75 so first thing that I want to know is what is the NRV what is the NRV in this case so I know that cost is 80 NRV is 50% of normal selling price minus so whatever the normal selling price we got it as 75 5% to be the cost of sales okay this is cost of sales this is selling price so if we deduct both of them it will be 75 minus 3.75 71 71.25 71.25 this is the cost of sales so cost is 80 whichever is lower we have to measure it at 71.25 okay fine so we have 400 quotes so 400 into 71.25 
2800 okay so we'll move it 800 skirts 800 skirts cost 20 each they too are found to be defective remedial work 5 rupees per skirt remedial work means rework cost so rework cost of 5 rupees per skirt 5 rupees per skirt that means this is normal or abnormal normal or abnormal we consider it to be abnormal okay so abnormal cost incurred is 5 rupees selling expense of the batches 800 so these are cost of sales but this is for the total batch this is not per skirt total batch and the batches of 800 skirts 800 skirts 800 rupees selling expense so cost of sale per skirt per skirt will be 1 rupee okay so they were sold at 28 each so now we'll write down for skirts cost is 20 nrv selling price is 28 minus further processing cost 5 we are not going to add this rework cost to 20 rupees this is abnormal in nature minus cost of sales so this is rupees 800 divided by 800 skirts 1 rupee so that makes it 22 whichever is lower 20 so cost will be 800 skirts into 20 16000 if i take the total we get it as 44500 okay the cost 28500 and the 16000 i have a doubt i have a doubt they have given me already the value of the inventory the value of the inventory given by them is 284700 284700 such a huge amount 284700 and what I am getting is only 44500. So why such a big difference? Now I need to think. I think, I believe, there are some other items of inventory also in that 284700 which have not been provided to us. We have been provided only two cases out of the total inventory of 284700. The case of 500 items and 800 items. The following items were included in cost these items are included in the cost so 284 700 also includes other inventory items and what do i need to present value of inventory as per as2 so i need to present those other inventory items also other inventory items also i'll have to present so one of the option is i first determine what are the other inventory items what is the cost of the other inventory items and i add this 44 500 in them so what were these other inventory items in my books What were these other inventory items in my book? The other inventory item would have been, let's say, what was the cost of quotes included? 400 quotes. And now the 284 700 would have measured it at cost. I believe the management doesn't understand how AS2 is to be applied. It is our duty to do it. So even in exam, 284 700 will be included at cost, which is 80 rupees. And if I talk about skirts, it will be 200 skirts, sorry, 800 skirts at 20 rupees. So that makes it 32,000 and 16,000, 48,000. So other items will be 284,700 minus 48,000, correct? 284,700 minus 48,000. Now they are to be measured, they will continue to measure at cost because no data is given. So we can now say that revised inventory value, revised inventory value as per AS2 will be 237,600 plus 44,500 the value of the inventory that we have found out. So that makes it 21. 2,81,200. My friend, there is one more option. The other option is we know that price of coats are at decline. The price of skirts are not at decline. The price of coats are at decline. So how much decline has the coats faced? I find out the decline in price of coats. So it is the coats were measured at 80 rupees, correct? We are measuring it at 71.25, so there is a decline of 8.75, correct? 8.75 minus 
we'll multiply that 8.75 with 400 quotes. So 8.75 compared to 400 quotes, 3500 is the decline in the value of inventory. 3500 is decline in the value of inventory. So the inventory that is reflected in my books at 284,700, I'll deduct 3500 from it. <coughs> so I get the same amount 281,200. So there are two methods, either of the method that you feel you are comfortable with, you can uh, measure the inventory accordingly. Okay, so 19 is a homework for you. I'll give you the answer, but you need to please calculate it. 956, 700, there are 350 shirts of 380 normally sold at 750. Included in this cost owing to defect, they were sold at 50% of normal selling price. 50% of normal selling price makes it 375. Selling expenses is 5% of the proceeds. So 356.25, what is the value of the inventory? So there is a decline of, decline of, decline of 8312. So I am giving you the answer. You need to calculate it on your own and you need to check whether you get 8312 or not. Okay, so I'll look at the another, another question. AS Limited purchase goods at a cost of 40 lakhs. Till the end of the financial year, 75% of the stock is sold. 75% of the stock is sold. How much amount of uh, stock is sold? 75% of 40 lakh, 30 lakhs. Company wants to disclose the closing stock at 10 lakh. So the remaining amount is 10 lakh. Well, and fine, company can show it. What is the issue in that? Expected sale value is 11 lakh. We can sell it at 11 lakh. And commission is 10%, 10% on sale, 10% on sale. That means commission is 11 lakh 10 into 10%. That is 1.1 lakh. This is cost of sales. Cost of sale is to be deducted from selling price to determine. NRV. So what we'll try to do is we'll try to determine the NRV. We know the cost is 10. NRV is 11 minus minus 1.1 1.1 that makes it 9.9 9.9. So cost or NRV which is lower 9.9. What should be the correct value of closing stock? 9.9. Okay. So we'll move a bit more ahead. Company purchase goods worth 1 lakh and sells them at 10% profit. That means company sells it at 1,10,000, correct? Company forced him, company forced him to sell at 25% below cost. 25% below cost, cost, cost is 1 lakh and you are supposed to sell it below 25%. 25% 25 is 25,000. Don't try to determine 25% of selling price. They have sold you 25% below cost. So, company has asked you to sell it at 1 lakh minus 25 percent which is 25,000. Company has asked you to sell it at 75,000. And accordingly gave free goods to cover the loss of 35 percent. 35 percent sir, how come 35 percent? 25 percent the loss below cost and 10 percent is the profit margin. 10 percent profit margin that you were supposed to earn because that's the reason why we are doing the business. We have not opened the business for a social cause. That okay, we are going to sell, we'll buy the inventory and sell it at below price. We haven't started the business for uh, social cause. So company has told us that you sell it at 25% below cost, we'll give you extra, we'll give you extra inventory, which will cover the loss as well the opportunity cost, the 10% that you wanted to earn. Sir, who does so? Uh, generally, if you see medicinal companies, medicinal com companies follow this practice. They ask the medicine, the pharmacies to sell it at below cost and accordingly some extra inventory is given to them which is free from which they are supposed to earn their margin. Okay, so that means something that is given to you free, what is written as free is actually not free, actually not supposed to be free, it carries a cost. What cost does it carry sir? What I have paid, I have paid 1 lakh, now 1 lakh splits into two parts sold at 25% below cost, coverage of 35%. Now, 1 lakh should be split in these two parts. Logically, out of 1 lakh, 75,000 is something that is paid for the inventory to be sold at 75,000. 75,000 paid for inventory to be sold at 75,000 below cost. And the remaining 25,000, the loss that has been faced by Amit, for it, he has received some free inventory. 
that means he has actually paid this 25,000 rupees for this coverage of loss I can say that I can interpret that you are an auditor you need to interpret whatever company says see you buy this much we give you this much free that means ultimately what you have paid includes the cost of both of them includes cost of both of them so logically what is sold includes the cost of 75,000 sold at cost and the remaining amount will make you earn profit so the remaining amount the cost of inventory of that free goods that you have got is not zero it is not zero it is the loss that you have faced because if I make the PNL and if suppose the inventory that you have received free is yet to be sold other inventory is sold so I'll show purchases at 1 lakh I'll show sales at 75,000 if the closing stock is measured at if you consider NRV to be zero because you haven't paid anything for it you'll say sir I got the inventory free so I haven't paid anything for it inventory is zero so what will happen is there is a gross loss of 25,000 that you will see next financial year coming financial year what will happen is opening stock will be nil sale will be 35,000 sir how did you get that 35,000 see I was supposed to sell this at 1, 1 lakh for 1 lakh 10,000 so 75 and 35 total should be 1 lakh 10,000 so that I earn my 10% difference that I had forgone so this gives me a gross profit of 35,000 is this a true and fair view that you have presented is this something that is presented by a chartered accountant does it make sense you show a loss of 25,000 in a year and then next year financial year you show 35,000 ka profit by having inventory of zero value you are earning 35,000 what the investor will say and when you add an inventory of 1 lakh rupees you face a loss of 25,000 what kind of management is the earning uh, is the company doing what we have to present as a true and fair view if the closing stock is valued at 25,000 we will not see any profit over here and if we see 25,000 over here the gross profit turns out to be 10,000 so this makes a bit sense that the inventory it sold later gives us a profit we haven't earned any profit over here sir why not to distribute the profit pro rata my friend there is a concept of prudence anticipated gains cannot be booked so unless those free inventory has not been sold in the market you cannot show the profit earlier in your books so what will happen is if the company is trying to promote its medicines if in the first go of 75,000 sale if the company if the medicine is not accepted or the medicine doesn't work out well the patients are not going to purchase this 25,000 rupees inventory that you are holding so you are actually going to face a loss so until there is a no profit can be shown over here because this is kind of a promotion activity being done, done by that medicinal company Amit is not promoting it that medicinal company is promoting it we cannot show any profit over here so now as per AS2 what I'll do is I'll valued my inventory at 25,000 the loss that I have forgone that I have gone uh, that I have faced so uh, 25,000 is actually you haven't faced any loss you haven't faced any loss actually will you measure the inventory at 25,000 okay so answer is given in your books 22 we have solved we'll move ahead we'll look at 23 cap product limited has an annual capacity of 40,000 units production overhead for the year 3 lakh 20 thousand okay whereas the variable cost incurred is 6 lakh 90 thousand administrative cost and selling cost is 2 lakh and 1 lakh 80 thousand respectively at the year end there are 6,000 units in stock okay find out value of inventory given the factory remained closed for one month factory remained closed for one month for non receipt of orders for non receipt of orders which is a normal practice which is a normal practice this is not abnormal okay I am not reading the remaining question we will solve this much first so what is your annual capacity annual capacity is 40,000 so this becomes your practical capacity but if I talk about the normal capacity, is your normal capacity also 40,000? You can produce annually 40,000 units. But one month, the factory is sold, uh, closed, sorry. So normal capacity is supposed to be 36,667 units. Okay, sir. How did you find the normal capacity to be on the basis of practical? Normal capacity, what we have heard, is past sales. 
सो इफ नॉर्मली फैक्ट्री इज क्लोज फॉर वन मंथ दैट मीन्स रिमेनिंग मंथ क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन इज साइलेंट दैट मीन रिमेनिंग मंथ वी आर वर्किंग एट हंड्रेड परसेंट कपैसिटी दैट इज द ओनली लॉजिक दैट आई कैन यूज ओके दैट्स वाई नाउ विल मूव एट द वेरियस कॉज डेट हैव बीन गिवन टू मी प्रोडक्शन ओवर इट इज थ्री ट्वेंटी आई राइट डाउन ऑल द कॉस्ट वेरिएबल कॉस्ट सिक्स नाइंटी एडमिन एंड सेलिंग इफ वी एज्यूम दैट द एडमिन कॉस्ट इज समथिंग विच इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू द रेगुलर कोर्स ऑफ एक्टिविटी ओके द लास्ट लाइन इज मिसिंग वी कैन नॉट सी द लास्ट लाइन ओवर इन द स्क्रीन आई टेल यू वॉट इज रिटर्न इन द लास्ट लाइन डोंट वरी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कॉस्ट एंड सेलिंग कॉस्ट वर टू लैक एंड रुपीज वन लैक एटी थाउजेंड रिस्पेक्टिवली इज वॉट इज रिटर्न सो टू लैक रुपीज इज एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कॉस्ट नाउ आई नीड टू एज्यूम एडमिन कॉस्ट इज नेसेसरी टू ब्रिंग इट टू द प्रेजेंट लोकेशन और नॉट इफ यू एज्यूम नॉट टू बी नॉट टू ब्रिंग इट टू द प्रेजेंट लोकेशन वी कैन इग्नोर इट and the best measure is always assume it not to be uh, to get it to the present location unless given in the question because it is better to ignore and value it at lower price so i need to ignore this admin cost i need to ignore this selling cost what does the question say is further at the year end there are 6000 units in stock 6000 units so i need to measure the closing stock 6000 units now production overhead i need to divide by normal capacity which is 36667 Variable cost I need to divide by actual production always, so which is thirty six six sixty seven. So this gives me eight point seven three, eighteen point eight two, eighteen point. So I'll measure my inventory at twenty seven point five five. If I talk about the closing stock, it will be six thousand units multiplied by twenty-seven point five five, one sixty-five, three hundred. This becomes my value of closing stock. Okay, <clears throat> now I'll read the question a bit more ahead. Would your answer be different if the factory remained closed for abnormal reasons? For abnormal reasons that means the one month that the factory was closed was due to abnormal reasons okay that means production over it the fixed overhead of 3 lakh 20000 given in the question should be divided by normal capacity which will be 40000 because factory was closed for abnormal reasons and variable cost 690 will be divided by always actual production because variable cost is always on per unit price that you have uh, actually incurred so now 3 lakh 20 to be divided by 4 lakh that makes sorry 40 000 8 rupees and this is going to be the same 18.82 so it is 26.82 now my closing stock value will be 26.82 multiplied by 6000 units 160 920 so i hope you can understand the difference between the two solutions in the first case what we have assumed is we have not assumed given in the question that normal capacity one month we remain closed as normal capacity as normally so normal capacity is 36667 but in second case we have seen that it is not closed normally for abnormal reasons you have closed it so the number of units are going to be 40000 when i talk about fixed overhead okay so we can move ahead with the next question uh my friend you can copy down the answer it is not given over there so that we can move ahead okay for any reason if the you haven't copied the answer completely and i have moved ahead please pause the video copy down the concept and then you can continue with the video so i'll uh, move ahead let's go with another concept can interest on custom duty interest on custom duty paid included in the value of inventory so there's a interest that is paid on custom duty when do you pay the interest on custom duty when custom duty has been paid on delayed basis so can it be included in the cost of inventory my friend inventory 
डज इट इंक्लूड इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट नो एज पर एस टू इंटरेस्ट कॉस्ट कैनॉट बी इंक्लूडेड इन द कॉस्ट ऑफ इन्वेंट्री सो विल एक्सक्लूड इट विल नॉट कंसिडर इट ओके सो विल मूव एड नाउ वी विल ट्राई टू वैल्यू एज पर इंडियस ओके एज पर इंडियस आई विल गिव द आंसर एज पर एस ऑल्सो एज पर इंडियस ऑल्सो मारुति सुजुकी प्रोवाइड्स रिबेट रिबेट सो वी आर डिस्कस रिबेट अलियर वॉट इज इट वॉल्यूम डिस्काउंट इफ यू परचेज एट अ पर्टिकुलर आफ्टर अ पर्टिकुलर लेवल द डिस्काउंट एज एस टू बी गिवन इफ शोरूम परचेस इज मोर दैन टेन थाउजेंड कार्स मोर दैन टेन थाउजेंड कार्स ड्यूरिंग द इयर सेवा लिमिटेड परचेज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड कार्स फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड कार्स एट द इयर एट फोर लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज पर कार एंड सोल्ड फोर्टीन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड कार्स डिटरमाइन द वैल्यू ऑफ क्लोजिंग स्टॉक सो इट इज अ वेरी सिंपल आई द एज पर एस और एज पर इंडिया रिबेट इज टू बी डिडक्टेड सो वॉट आई टॉक वॉट वील डिस्कस ओवर हियर इज प्राइज इज फोर लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड बट सिंस यू हैव परचेज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड कार्स यू हैव रिसीव्ड अ रिबेट ऑफ थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज सो विल डिडक्ट दैट थ्री थाउजेंड रुपीज एंड हाउ मेनी यूनिट्स डू यू हैव इन योर स्टॉक सो इफ आई कंपेयर फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड वा परचेज एंड फोर्टीन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड सोल्ड सो यू हैव फोर हंड्रेड कार्स इन योर शोरूम फोर हंड्रेड कार्स इन योर शोरूम डेट गिव्स यू योर वैल्यू ऑफ क्लोजिंग स्टॉक ओके ओके Let's move ahead. Dealer purchases one thousand cars on defer payment basis. Defer payment basis. Now we need to discuss what does the Indian accounting standard has to talk about, uh, which is different from ES. Yes. If you look at the cost of purchase in your notes, which we have discussed, it include duties. Taxes, other recoverable costs are deducted. Freight, invert, directly attributable cost, trade discount is deducted, rebate, duty drawback is deducted. There is something written as and other similar items under NDS two. Other similar items. Now, what do you mean by other similar items, and how does it affect the presentation of AS compared to NDS? Now, see, I have purchased an inventory of suppose bikes. we deal in bikes and we are supposed to pay for bikes to the company the bike is available at 30000 rupees if we make an immediate payment and if we are going to pay it after let's say 6 months the bike is available at 32000 rupees if paid after 6 months so company has a policy If you don't want credit, we'll give you the bike at thirty, and if you want the credit, we'll give you the bike at thirty-two thousand rupees. Okay. Now we always avail the credit. We as a company always avail the credit. So now, as per AS two, when I am answering the question, what I can, I can include is the cost of purchase. I can include cost of transportation. What I can deduct is trade discount. I can deduct is rebate. I can deduct is duty drawbacks. But I cannot deduct something called as credit discount or cash discounts. so these discounts are kind of credit discounts that if we pay immediately we are getting it at 30 so we are getting a discount of 2000 only if we pay immediately so it is not a nature of trade discount this is of the nature of credit discount credit discounts are not deducted under es2 so if i am paying 32000 rupees and in the year end we have 100 bikes as closing stock so what we'll do is 100 bikes multiplied by 32000 rupees This will be my inventory value. Thirty-two lakh becomes my inventory value. So this is AS two. This is what AS two says. In AS two says, you need to deduct other similar items as well. Items which are similar to discounts, similar to rebates, similar to duty drawbacks. So credit discount is also a discount which is similar in nature. So what my India says is, you need to deduct this credit discount also. Also, you need to uh, value your inventory at cash equivalent. If paid immediately, cash equivalent if paid immediately. So what I have paid immediately, year end my bikes will be valued at hundred bikes into thirty thousand and not thirty two thousand. So it will be valued at thirty lakhs and not thirty two lakhs. Okay, so inventory is to be valued at thirty lakhs. Sir, I have a doubt. I have paid thirty two lakh rupees. You are asking me to present my inventory like closing stock is to be valued at thirty lakh, but even purchases will be. Uh, uh, Accounted accordingly. So what I'll do is purchases account debit thirty lakhs. To company's name. Let's say if it is Hero Honda, 
I'll write hero Honda account to hero Honda account 30 lakhs. But what I need to pay them is 32 lakh and not 30 lakhs. Okay, calm down. If you have purchased this on 1st January, 1st January, so you need to account on 1st January itself, we'll account it at 30 lakh, not 32 lakhs. Not 32 lakh, 30 lakh. Calm down, I'll tell you. You have to pay after 6 months, so it is 30th June. So what 30th June will do is, Hero Honda account debit to bank. Now 30 lakhs are in the books of Hero Honda. What I am paying is 32 lakhs. This is in the nature of interest. 2 lakh rupees is in the nature of interest. It is kind of 6 months interest that the company is charging me. Because I am paying 6 months later. So if I am going to pay 6 months later, I have to pay 6 months interest. Take a window dressing, kind of window dressing, kind of similar example. If I tell the company there is no such policy, if I tell the company, okay, I, bike, I will buy the bike but I don't have the money right now, uh, I will pay you after 6 months. Company will say, okay, pay us interest, pay us interest. Company can say that. So it is a similar nature transaction. You are naming it as discount, you have just changed the name. But the concept remains the same. So it has to be accounted for as interest. Okay, do you understand what INDS is trying to say? This is not AS, this is INDS. As per India's accounting is going to be in this uh, aspect. Sir, I have one more doubt. You have selected 1st January as a date. Then you have given 30th Jan June as a date. There is a date named 31st March, end of financial year in between that has come up. And we have uh, read somewhat, somewhat we remember in CA interview, we have read that interest is accounted on accrual basis. Now what to do, sir? What to do? Correct. 31st March, if there is a year end in between, this entry gets cancelled. We will debit interest account to Hero Honda because we haven't paid it till now. So it will be 2 lakh was the total interest to be paid over the period of 6 months divided by 2, 1 lakh. One, why divided by 2 sir? 6 months into 3 months. Now it's better. 1 lakh will be debited as interest. After that, when we are going to actually pay on 30th June, again I will write first interest to Hironda, 1 lakh, the remaining amount. And then we will pass the payment entry, Hironda, debit to bank, 32 lakhs, the price of the bike and the interest. I hope I have cleared up the complete summary of what Indian accounting standard wants to say. So Indian accounting standard, under Indian accounting standard, if the payment is to be deferred, if the payment is to be deferred, we need to account for cash equivalent as inventory if paid immediately, cash equivalent if paid immediately. Okay, we don't need to account, we don't need to write about, uh, what I should say is, we don't need to write it at including interest price, while AS ask us to write the measure the inventory at the price that we have paid. We have paid. Deferred interest is not excluded. I hope it is clear till this point. Sir, we need to write this difference. Uh, there is a summary note that will be given to you. Don't worry. Other than that, the concepts are written well and fine in the notes. You don't need to worry about it. But if you want all the differences to be written at one place, it will be given to you. Don't worry. Okay. So, we will move ahead. So now with that example of Maruti, twenty five thousand you are supposed to pay per month. Cash price is two eighty, which is to be paid in twelve annual installments of twelve that you are going to pay. If the closing stock is twenty. We'll measure the twenty at two lakh eighty thousand fifty six lakhs, and the difference of what you are paying, what you are paying is twenty five thousand into twelve. 3 lakhs. So what you are paying extra is 20,000 will be considered to be interest in nature. Okay. We we'll look at next question. Z limited ordered 13,000 kg of chemical at 90 per kg. I hope you remember before the break we have solved this question. Similar question has been solved. Okay. So there were drum, there was a cost of drum, sale of containers which we haven't deducted. We have deducted it over here. So it is a similar question with second type of presentation of the same question. Uh, I'm not considering it. Let's move ahead. 28th question. Product A raw material cost, wages cost, overhead cost 40, 30 and 20 respectively, 40, 30, 20 respectively. 
selling price is 110 selling expenses 10 percent selling expenses 10 percent so selling price is 110 selling expenses 10 percent how much 11 that makes it 99 okay and what is the cost 40 and 30 makes it 70 and 20 90 okay 200 units are included in inventory 200 units are included at inventory so what is the cost 90 how much are you going to measure it at 90 compared to 200 makes it 18,000 okay so this is for a we'll move at b simple question huh, no? material cost and wages are 45 and 35 respectively 45 and 35 respectively both to be included okay and selling price is 150 selling price 150 so if i add both of them that makes it 80 and selling price is 150 however due to defect in manufacturing 800 units was sold at 70 sold at 70 what is the cost 80 what is the nrv 70 70 we are sold selling it at 70 question is saying that 70 multiplied by how many units 800 units so for b i can say the selling price is 70 and the cost is 80 whichever is lower 70 so 70 multiplied by 800 units 56000 okay product c material cost wages overheads 50 40 30 respectively 50 40 30 so 50 and 40 makes it 90 and 30 makes it 120 120 selling price is 300 percent of material cost 300 percent of material cost what is the material cost what is the material cost 50 50 50 ka 300 percent what is the 300 percent of 50 what is the 300 percent of 50 150 150 cost is 50 40 30 cost is 120 selling price is 150 however due to manufacturing defects 1000 units of product C are sold at 110 110 so what is the cost 120 what is the NRV 110 whichever is lower 110 how many units 1000 units okay I didn't read it after incurring expenditure of 8000 towards repair so there's a further expenditure of 8000 towards repair 8000 rupees towards repair as well cannot be seen in the screen please see your notes please refer the notes so i need to deduct nrv further by 8000 total expenditure for 1000 unit that means 8 rupees 8 rupees 102 so 120 compared to 102 102 per unit okay 102 per unit so 102 multiplied by 1000 units 1 lakh 2000 okay 1 lakh 2000 so what is the total cost of inventory first case 18,000 second case 56,000 plus 1 lakh 2,000 please in the exam remember to add all the figures that is the place where the student makes a mistake okay <clears throat> now there is one more concept service provider valuation of investments in case of service provider so inventory in case of service provider so inventory of service provider is measured under Indian accounting standard sir this is very tricky how are we supposed to measure the value of the inventory in case of a service provider now suppose if you are an architect it is very simple it is going to be very simple don't worry there is a project that requires 100 hours of architect's time 100 hours of architect time and the architect is paid 6 lakh rupees per annum and in an year he is supposed to work for 200 days 8 hours a day that means he is supposed to work for 1600 hours a day now year end he has only already spent 60 hours towards this project 60 hours towards this project okay 100 hours he is supposed to work for a project he has already worked 60 hours half of the design is complete is anyone going to pay you for the half design completed by the architect when he completes the complete design that is the point at which the person is going to pay you okay so no one is going to pay you for half completed design so this the service that already architect has provided for the 60 hours we have paid him for the 60 hours how much have we paid him if you pay him 6 lakh rupees for 16,000 hours how much have you paid him for 60 hours 
simple so we have studied this in costing yes it's a similar concept you have paid him 2250 rupees 6 lakh divided by 16,000 into 60, 2,250 rupees. This is my friend the value of closing stock. 2,250 will be the value of the closing stock. So, we will not go in much detail into the concept. No one is going to ask you the practical question on the same. Okay. To the extent service providers have inventory, they measure it at cost of production. These costs primarily are labor cost and other cost of personnel directly engaged. So, we have seen architect. There can be other labor costs as well. Okay, and there can be other words as well. Next concept is my friend joint product byproducts. I will not go much detail into it. Firstly, being revision. Secondly, being not important from exam point of view. No one is going to ask you determine the cost of joint product over here. We have they have already tested you for this at CA Enter. You cleared at CA Enter, and they feel they assume that you have the knowledge of how to determine the joint cost. And even if they want to test the joint cost, they are going to test it in costing paper. So, we are not going to see it over here. What we need to understand for accounting concept is accounting for byproduct. My friend, the accounting for byproduct is same as scrap. Same as scrap. You deduct it from the cost of inventory. You deduct it from the cost of inventory. Okay. So, deduct from the total cost. We have seen the containers cost that was being deducted as scrap sale in one of the questions 500 rupees. Okay. Same concept for byproduct. So, we will see a question and I will only solve. There is a very lengthy question. I will only solve about the byproduct, the treatment for byproduct, nothing else. Okay. In the manufacturing process of Vijoy Limited, byproduct BP emerges along with two products MP1 and MP2, main product 1, main product 2. Details are as under. So, 15,000 units we had inserted. We, it costs 160, wages 82 was paid, fixed overhead was paid, variable overhead was paid. Everything is cost of inventory. MP1 6250, MP2 5000, byproduct 1600 units. And there is a closing stock of main product. So, I am not interested in main product. I am not going to tell you how the joint cost is going to be splitted. See, we don't have that much of time and it does not make sense to study it right now at this position. I won't uh, even uh, ask you to study. Please skip it. So, there is a byproduct of 1600 units. Average market price is 80 per unit and 50 per unit. 80 per unit and 50 per unit of main products by product is sold at now this is the data that is important for us 25 per unit what is the price at which you are selling the by product 25 how many units are you going to sell 1600 there is a profit of 5000 on sale of by product profit on sale of by product 5000 rupees please ignore this is additional data given by institute which doesn't make any sense you cannot make profit on by product you cannot make by profit on by product because whatever you are going to realize from by product will be deducted from the cost will be deducted from the cost okay after incurring separate processing charge of 4000 so in by product we have incurred a cost of 4000 we sold it at 25 but we incurred a cost of 4000 rupees and packing charges of 6000 rupees and packing charges of 6000 rupees was okay so there is a full stop and then there is written 6000 realized from sale of scrap so the sale of scrap is different so whatever is my cost this total 160 82 58 40 total cost 3 lakh 40 thousand first thing that i'll deduct is cost of scrap first thing that i'll deduct is cost of scrap please deduct cost of scrap 6000 rupees from it first thing that you do now i'll talk about the by product the by product is sold at 25 so 25 for 1600 units 25 for 1600 units makes it 45,000 oh sorry 40,000 40,000 but to earn this 40,000 rupees to earn this 40,000 rupees I need to incur a cost of separate processing 4,000 and packing of 6,000 I need to incur 10,000 to earn this 40,000 so how much have I realized from the byproduct what is the amount that I have realized from my byproduct what I have realized is only 30,000 rupees only 30,000 rupees my friend this 30,000 is to be deducted from the cost of your inventory deducted from the cost of your inventory to de uh, determine the cost so that is how the valuation is to be done and i hope now it is clear that we are going to value our inventory at 3 lakh 4000 the main product will be valued at 3 lakh 4000 on what basis in the ratio of selling price of the main products okay
we have to apportion the cost, we will not talk about that part now. So joint products I have completed, I have completed with the NRV, I have completed up with the valuation technique, I will move a bit more ahead. Now we need, no sorry, measurement techniques were covered, now we need to cover the valuation techniques. My friend, the valuation can be done, generally the valuation is done on specific inventory basis. That means the company should have an account for one to one inventory at what price the inventory was purchased and what was the cost. The inventory that you have sold will be gone. That means if a medicine company, I will take a very simple example, purchases 10 strips first day, second day it purchases 20 strips, third day it is purchasing 30 strips. Okay, so this was purchased at 10 rupees, this was purchased at 11 rupees and this is purchased at 12 rupees. They sold 5 strips. Now how they have sold these 5 strips? 2 strips were purchased, uh, sold from the day 1 inventory, from this one. 2 were sold from day 2 inventory, that is this one. And 1 strip was sold from this inventory, day 3 inventory. So if I go for specific valuation of closing stock, it will be, I have 8 strips of day 1 purchased at 10 rupees. I have 18 strips of day 2 purchased at 11 rupees and I have 29 strips of day 3 purchased at 12 rupees. Okay, 2 was sold from this, 2 was sold from this and 1 was sold from this. <coughs> this is specific inventory valuation which you can find in the companies using ERPs, using SAP. We generally don't find it in uh, companies using tally. Uh, a company who has to maintain one to one coding system is generally the companies who use this system of uh, valuation. If specific inventory valuation is not available, that is something that is not available with 90% of the customers all around. 90% of your uh, clients don't have any such SAP ERP, they are not ready to pay such huge amount, they are using the pirate version of tally maybe, okay. And some people not even using that manual accounting process. You have two techniques that you can use, first is first in first out, the next is weighted average technique. You can use any of the method of for valuation of stock. Now what do I mean by first in first out? I know you are aware of this concept. Day, uh, I'll take the same example. The 5 strips sold will be considered to be sold from the first day purchase. That means now the inventory that I have as per first in, first out, 5 strips of 10 rupees, the remaining balance from the 10 strips that I have, plus 20 strips at 11 plus 30 strips of 12 rupees. So this is first in first out. Okay. Last concept is weighted average. I will use that weighted average concept also over here. Now I know that the total stock value before the sale, total stock value before the sale was 10 into 10 plus 20 into 11 plus 30 into 12. That makes it 680. So 680 is the cost for 60 strips, correct? 680 is the cost for 60 strips. I have sold 5 strips. So now I have 55 strips in my go down. So that gives me my weighted average. The total of all the inventories, okay? Total of all the inventories divided by total units that I have multiplied by whatever closing stock is remaining. So no one is asking me about all this thing. So this is valuation techniques. These valuation techniques are to be applied differently in different locations. Generally we use absorption costing technique, absorption costing technique. So something that we have studied in costing uh, per unit prices are determined and uh, we try to determine the cost of the inventory on that basis. If absorption costing is difficult to measure, sometimes for some companies, it is a bit difficult to measure absorption costing or used to use the technique. You can use the standard costing techniques. The predetermined prices are known and on the basis of that, we are going to file the value of inventory. We are going to find the value of inventory. But what about someone like a grocery store? Sir, what do you mean by a grocery store? We go to buy daily product needs from the various grocery stores, the nearby daily uh, replenishment shops that are uh, located in our location. Like suppose I go to a store and I ask them, please give me a biscuit or a packet of parleji. 
Now this person holding the biscuit packet of Parley G also holds the inventory for other company products like of Parley and Britannia, of other company like Bisfarm as well. Not only are they holding the biscuits, they are also holding other products like shampoos, soaps, conditioners, creams. They also pro pro store products like wheat, rice. They have 300 to 400 types of inventory with them. Now for every inventory item, I am going to ask him, please measure it at absorption costing. Now I am going to check cost, NRV, whichever is lower. Each and every item, I will go, I will see, okay, Parley G, you have purchased it at 5 rupees. Now the NRV has reduced to 4 rupees. Please measure it at 4 rupees. Now I go and I take up, take up the second product. I take up the Jim Jam Biscuit. Jim Jam Biscuit, you have purchased it at 6 rupees. It is available at 7. Okay, continue it at 7. So if this has got the method that we are going to follow with each and uh, every grocery shop, the only to complete one audit, the 30th September last date that is given to you, we'll use the complete six months, one article will completely be dedicated only to one grocery store. And what is he earning? 1 lakh to 50, uh, 1 lakh to 1 lakh 50 thousand or maybe 2 lakh rupees per annum. He won't even pay me an audit fees of more than 2000 to 3000 rupees for that one article is going to be dedicated for six months working only the cost of NRV which is lower concept. The amount that I am going to pay to the article is 1500 rupees per month. For six months, I am going to pay him 9000 and the fees that I am getting is 2000. Does it make sense? How will I apply AS2 in such a case? So we don't do it the measurement in case of such shops using either absorption costing or standard costing. We don't apply this cost NRV FIFO LIFO. We use FIFO LIFO, but the method that we are applying is retail method. The method that we use is retail method okay okay uh, one thing i didn't discuss over here lifo is prohibited i believe you are aware with this why is lifo prohibited because india is an inflationary economy the prices of the inventory keep increasing day by day so that is the reason lifo is prohibited because it will show understatement of profit because of that okay so let's start with what do I mean by this retail method? How do I value my inventory under retail method? We are going to see the grocery shop inventory, all the inventory products to be a single product. All inventory product, whatever it has, as a single product. So whatever you have purchased during the year, whatever that you have purchased during the year, let's say you purchase worth 10 lakh rupees of material for the whole year cost. It has an MRP, it must be having some MRP and uh, that is something that the grocery store uh, person is aware of. He can tell you that the MRP of the complete stock is 12 lakh rupees. You must be having some opening stock. He must be having some opening stock. Let's say he was having an opening stock of cost 2 lakh rupees, which could be sold for 2.5 lakhs. MRP worth 2.5 lakh. The sales that we have made during the year are 11 lakhs. Sorry, not over here. I should write it at over here 11 lakh so we have sold mrp worth 11 lakh rupees of goods we don't know the cost of the same we don't know the cost we know the mrp we have sold 11 lakh rupees mrp worth of goods during the year what is cost of inventory what is the cost of inventory my friend i can tell you what is the mrp of the inventory I know 12 lakh rupees was the MRP of my purchase goods, 2.5 was of the opening stock, so that makes it 14.5, I have sold it for 11 lakh, I know 3.5 lakh rupees, MRP worth of closing stock is held with me, I don't know what is the cost. Sir, we have two techniques available, first in, first out or weighted average, first in, first out or weighted average. I will assume if I am valuing it as per first in, first out. I will assume opening stock was sold first, 2.5 lakh has been sold first, 2.5 lakh has been sold first out of this 11 lakh, what we have sold is 2.5 lakh rupees worth of goods. So if I reduce 2.5 lakh from this, what I get is 8.5 lakh. So I have 8.5 lakh rupees worth of inventory with me, 8.5 lakhs, is it fine? I know MRP worth sale is 8.5 lakhs that means the inventory that I am holding of 3.5 lakh MRP is completely from the my purchases during the year and I know the cost of my purchases during the year very simple to determine the cost cost is 10 lakh divided by 12 lakhs 
तो कॉस्ट इज 83.33 परसेंट ऑफ एम 83.33 परसेंट ऑफ एम वेरी सिंपल वेरी सिंपल कॉस्ट इज 83.33 परसेंट ऑफ द एम डिड यू गेट द आइडिया दैट आई हैव क्लोजिंग स्टॉक वो थ्री पॉइंट फाइव लैक विथ मी एटी परसेंट इज द कॉस्ट दैट मीन्स द कॉस्ट ऑफ क्लोजिंग स्टॉक विल बी थ्री पॉइंट फाइव लैक मल्टीप्लाइड बाई एटी करेक्ट so that makes it 2.9 1 2.91 i hope you got the concept of how to determine the closing stock value okay sir we got the concept now what now what to do another one weighted average weighted average very simple much more simpler than this first in first out concept i had a total mrp worth 14.5 lakh of goods that were purchased for 12 lakhs 14.5 lakh worth of goods that were purchased for 12 lakhs so 12 lakhs divided by 14.5 lakhs is the cost of the inventory 82.75% that means my closing stock value is going to be 3.5 multiplied by 82.75% that makes it 2.89 so the value of the inventory is going to be 2.89 as per the retail method this is the method that is commonly used that means if nothing is written in the question i have to solve it using weighted average concept so we'll complete up with this weighted average concept and then we'll end the class for the day and continue with my next day valuation okay so there's a basic question you can understand i'll not going to read this 30th question i'm moving towards the 31st question Ganesh operates a retail business for the financial year. The following data is given: value of inventory eighty thousand, retail price. This is the cost sixty thousand. Purchases one forty, cost one sixty. Value of closing stock during the year is. We'll find the value of closing stock if sale is two lakh. So we are going to use weighted average concept. The cost is one lakh eighty thousand for goods. For goods having MRP. Two lakh twenty thousand. So we have made a sale of two lakh. We have made a sale of two lakh out of two lakh twenty thousand MRP. What is the closing stock? We have sold two lakh rupees out of two lakh twenty thousand MRP. What is the closing stock? Twenty thousand. Some students have a very ridiculous habit. They say, "Sir, cost is one lakh eighty thousand. Sale is two lakh. That means closing stock is twenty thousand." Luckily, in the question, the figure turned out to be the same. What if the cost was one lakh ninety thousand? So please, please, uh, these are very logically interpreted questions. Please don't make such silly mistakes. Two lakh rupee sale. Compare it to MRP. MRP is two lakh twenty thousand. Twenty thousand is the closing stock. So I can determine the value of my closing stock to be sixteen thousand three sixty three, sixteen three sixty four written over here. Okay. Okay. And another question is on similar pattern. We are not going to discuss the another question. You are go. You can. Uh, go through the same there is just one more small concept that i need to teach you and then we can end our class the concept is mark up and mark down sir what do you mean by mark up sometimes the goods that i purchase from the grocery store has a label sticked over them increase in price by like earlier price before this sticker is 20 rupees after label is is 22 so there is a 2 rupee increase in the price year end there was such certain such labeled products that were available in the inventory we call it as markup we call it as markup okay so markup is always included in the retail price to determine the percentage of cost so if my total cost of inventory is 60000 and a retail price is 99 i'll add the markup 1000 so 1 lakh rupees out of which 60000 is the cost that means 60% is the cost 60% is the cost markdown are basically the goods that have been perished or the retailer has faced a loss because they have expired they have expired so we have 88000 rupees sale made during the year what we'll do is we'll increase it by markdown we are not going to reduce the markdown from the cost we are going to increase the sale price from by the markdown so 2000 rupees will be increased that means now the total sale becomes 90000 so 10000 becomes my closing stock as per this example 
so we have 1 lakh rupees of inventory of which 90,000 sold, 10,000 rupees is the inventory, 60% is the cost, 6,000. No one is going to ask you markdown markdown in the exam, so don't worry about that part, okay. So we will continue with the AS2 tomorrow and uh, see with the remaining part. Thank you.